Hi, in this problem we're going to find the Laplace transform of e to the kt, and we're going to do it using the definition of the Laplace transform, so basically the long way. Now, many of you probably already know what the answer is here. It's 1 over s minus k. So this is a formula that you want to know. Um, so the Laplace of this is equal to this. Totally worth memorizing if you're studying Laplace transforms. In this video, though, we're going to do this using the definition. Recall the definition of the Laplace transform says the Laplace of a function of t, which I'll call little f of t, this is equal to the improper integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times and then f of t dt. So this is the definition that we're going to use to do this problem. And this is a pretty good problem because it's not hard. And it has a lot of like key concepts, I think. So solution. So we'll start by simply just applying the formula. So this is the Laplace of e to the kt. This is equal to. And so now what we'll do is we will replace f of t with e to the kt. So this is the improper integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st. And then e to the kt, and then we have our dt. All right, the next step is to realize that we have the same bases here. Whenever you have the same base, you can add the exponents when you're multiplying. So this is equal to the improper integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st plus kt and then we have our dt right here. Okay, now we could probably clean this up a little bit. I'm thinking we can factor something out here. So this is uh, the improper integral from zero to infinity. And what you can do here is you can pull out uh, a t. But it might be a little bit cleaner to pull out a negative t because there's a negative here in front of the s. So let's do that. So this is negative t, parentheses, and then looks like we need an s here because negative t times s is negative st. And then here we have a plus kt, but we pulled out a negative t. So we need a minus k. You see, because minus t times minus k is positive kt. So, and then we have dt. Okay, now to integrate this, I'm going to use something that I know from before. So in general, if you have like, let me use a different color here. Say you have the integral of e to the ax dx. If a is a constant, you just make a u substitution here. You let u be equal to ax, you know, and then you compute du, etc. And you basically just end up dividing by a, or writing it like this, 1 over a, e to the ax plus c. Now, obviously, a here can't be 0. So we can do that here in this problem. Here, our constant, our a, in this example, would be negative s minus k. So this is basically 1 over negative s minus k. And then we just have e to the negative t s minus k. This is the easiest way to do it. I mean, you can go to the side and convince yourself, call this whole piece here u. This is the answer that you will get. And then we're going from zero to infinity. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this infinity. What you're supposed to do is when you have stuff like this is you can put a variable here in place of the infinity and let your variable approach infinity. So I'm gonna go back to a brighter, easier to see color. This is equal to the limit. Let's use the variable b. Little b approaches infinity of, also I'm gonna take this negative sign, I'm gonna put it upstairs negative 1 over s minus k. And we have e to the negative t s minus k. And again, we're going from 0 to b. Again, simply just replacing the infinity symbol with the letter b. So really, really uh, important to do. OK, so now uh, we can keep going, right? We can evaluate this or start to. This is the limit as b approaches infinity. So you plug in this one first, 
And it's really important to remember that you're plugging it in for the T, right? Because you've got all kinds of variables here. You've got S, you've got T, you've got K, um, E, it's not it's a constant though, but you've got all kinds of letters here in this problem. So it's really easy to mess up. So you wanna plug it in for the T. So this is negative one over S minus K. I'm gonna use a bracket here because I wanna leave this outside. And so now we're gonna take the B and put it where the T is. This is E, the negative B, parentheses, S minus K, and then minus, and then you take the zero and you put it where the T is. So that'll just be E to the negative zero, I'll, I'll write it, S minus K. All that's gonna be zero, so this will be one here, right? This is just gonna turn into a one, and we'll have a negative here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the limit. So I'm gonna come to the side here and explain how to do that. So um, this piece is just gonna become a one, so all of this becomes a one. And then so let's just focus on this piece here. So notice that you can bring this downstairs, and you can think of it like this. Limit b approaches infinity of one over e to the b s minus k. And so basically, um, as long as the e stays downstairs, this is gonna be equal to zero because the bottom is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And whenever you have a fraction and the bottom gets bigger, the fraction becomes smaller. If you're ever confused, just think about like one-tenth and one over 100, right? One over 100 is smaller than one over 10. That's because 100 is bigger. And one over 1,000 is even smaller because that's 1,000 is bigger. So this is gonna work as long as this stuff stays downstairs. So B is positive, obviously, because it's approaching infinity, but we do need S minus K to be positive. So that means that S needs to be bigger than K for all of this to work. So I'm just gonna like write that here so we know that. So continuing with our limit, this is equal to, we can drop the limit sign, negative one over S minus K, bracket, and then this piece here we said was zero, and then minus one, so really nice. It cleans up really, really nice after you take that limit, which makes it really, really cool. And then the last thing to do is just realize you can multiply these, right? So this is this zero goes away. This is negative one over s minus k times negative one. And so this is equal to one over s minus k. This will be true as long as s is bigger than k, right? That's That's when it's true. So that's it. That's the final answer. So we've shown a formula, right? we've, we've proven, I guess, that uh, if you have a Laplace transform of e to the kt, we have actually verified the formula. This is equal to one over s minus k, and this will occur when s is bigger than k. Really cool, right? So, and that's a formula that you typically memorize if you're ever uh, studying Laplace transforms. Um, this is definitely one you'll wanna know. You can always look it up, but it's pretty easy to memorize. Some books use different variables, like I have a book that uses A, they do this, and they say it's one over S minus A for S bigger than A. Some books will use B, etc. But yeah, now you know how to come up with it. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.